chapter 4, and I'm going to bring a message tonight that's probably a timely message, and probably something that all of you need to read with a reminder and a refresher is, uh, I want to talk to you for a few minutes tonight on being positive in a negative world, and we know, what, uh, we know what's going on in our world in a lot of different arenas, uh, not, uh, you know, we focus on political right now, but it's not just a political scene, uh, a lot of different areas of our world we look at, and there's so much negativity. Uh, even in just interactions and relationships with people, uh, so much negative things going on. And so I want to look at that topic tonight as a Christian. How do we stay positive? Uh, how do we face the no negativity that we know is out there? How do we face that and stay positive in our minds and our hearts and our actions? And so I want to look at that topic tonight. So we found Philippians chapter 4. Uh, we're going to read verse 6 through 9 together tonight. If you're able to tonight, go ahead and stand with me out of respect for God's word. Give a chance to stretch your legs. Uh, you didn't get enough testimony, so I'm going to preach an hour and a half. So, uh, I'm kidding. It's fine. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, and let's read uh, verse 6 through 9 together. Familiar passage. Uh, you'll know it as we start reading it together. Look at verse 6 to get us started. The Bible says, Be careful for nothing, uh, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace, Shall. Is that the verse? Oh, at the bottom. I'm sorry. I turned it. I thought there was only verse 8 on there for you. If you missed that verse, we'll read it again, verse 9. Uh, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. It helps if I know how I'm reminding my Christ. <laughs> anyway, tremendous passage. Uh, four short verses, but just power packed full of truth and, and helpful truth to us as a Christian. Tonight. So let's pray together. You can see, I'll get jump right into the message. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for your goodness. Uh, Lord, it's good to, uh, to be able just to gather with your people. First of all, but then to hear uh, people testify about how good you are. And uh, you truly are an amazing God. And you work in our lives where we don't deserve it. We're so grateful for it tonight. And thank you for uh, being so good for, to us. Lord, thank you for your mercy that are new every morning. Uh, thank you, Lord, that we can trust you. And uh, we know that you're in control. Father, we pray now tonight as we uh, open your word for the next few minutes, we pray for blessed preaching and the teaching this evening. Uh, Lord, may it be something that just kind of helps us and encourages us. Uh, Lord, we know there's a lot of negativity in our world. And so we pray that you'll help us to keep a positive mindset, uh, Lord, knowing that this world is not our home. And we are passing through. Uh, but because we have to live here, Lord, we also have to have a, a positive influence while we're here. Uh, so help us, Lord, through this passage tonight. We pray we ask the things in your name. Man, thank you. You can see that. Give you a couple of thoughts here. Um, just kind of an introduction before we actually get into the message. But uh, I'm going to make two two statements here as introductions. And uh, the first one I'm going to make is this. And uh, I know you're not going to say, "Well, duh." Okay, here it is. Number one, we live in a negative world. We don't live in a positive world. Okay. Uh, if you find positivity in the world outside of the church or outside believers, it's kind of one of those, wow, <laughs> you know, I didn't know that existed. Uh, we live in a negative world. John chapter 16, verse 33, uh, Jesus himself tells us you're going to find tribulation in the world. Uh, you're going to find that negativity in the world. Uh, there's so many problems in the world today. I'm not going to get into them and list them. Uh, if I did, we'd all start to have to suffer with depression tonight. We, we're aware of the many problems in our world today. And the thing is this, the world's problems affect the Christian. We live in the world. We don't avoid them. We're not sheltered from them. Uh, and so when you see the violence and the war and the crime uh, and, and, and you know, abortion and all the things, you can name all kinds of the prison sentences, you see all that kind of stuff going on. In one way, maybe indirectly because we're God's children, we are still affected by those things in a negative way. Um, so we live in a negative world. But let me say this number two. And then we'll get into the message. We, as Christians, are not to be negative people. Right. Uh, we live amongst it. It, it. it seems to be more prevalent than positivity in our world. But we, as Christians, have to stay positive. We're not to join in with the negative crowd. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 reminds us that we're supposed to be rejoicing people. Rejoice in the Lord always. 
And again, I say rejoice. Uh, so we're supposed to be positive people, focusing on positive thoughts, focusing on praising the Lord. Uh, you know, in every bad situation, God is still there. Uh, in every situation that we go through, God still has a plan. And, and God always brings things out for our good and his glory. We know that. So stay positive. The Bible tells us here, uh, Paul writes to the church at Philippi, and in verse number 8, he gives us some things to focus our attention on. He says, think on these things. What are they? Things that are true, honest, and just, and lovely, uh, pure, good report, things that bring virtue, things that have praise. Think on those things. Now, the thing is this. As Christians tonight, we have to uh, think on those things, but there has to be a little bit of a, uh, of a determination, if you will, to change our mindset. Uh, because we're human, and because we're carnal, because we're fleshly, and because, unfortunately, the old man still lives inside of us, uh, it's very easy to have negative thoughts. It's very easy to fit into that negative mold because that's kind of how we're born, okay? And so we have to reprogram our thinking, if you will. Uh, sometimes, unfortunately, in our world, we even see Christians who do fall into that negative mindset. And, and they like to gripe and complain and criticize, and you're like, let me slap you. Come on, you know? Be positive. <laughs> if, if anybody's going to be positive in this world, folks, it ought to be the child of God. Amen. Because we have every reason to, first of all. Uh, and, and second of all, because we're reminded to rejoice in the Lord always. So let's look tonight at how we can be positive in a negative world. And, and I think I have, you have an outline in front of you. Four, four, four points. Uh, four thoughts I want to give you tonight, and uh, we'll think on these things, okay? So number one, number one, we must relish God's love. We must relish God's love. Now that's not the type of relish you put on a hot dog, okay? Make sure we get that out of the way, okay? Every time I say that word, that's why I say go. Relish on the hot dog. Uh, we must relish God's love. Uh, verse number six and verse number seven that we, that we talked about, you know, it reminds us to be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything, the scripture says, but with prayer and supplication, thanksgiving, uh, talk to God. Make your request known to him. And it says in verse number seven, the peace of God, we pass in all of things or keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. You know, if you can be thankful for absolutely nothing tonight but one thing, you ought to be thankful for the love of God. And if nothing else can keep you positive, you ought to be able to stay positive because of the love of God. And if you truly stop and wrap your mind and focus on the fact that God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for your sins, that he forgave you where you were, that he cleansed you and changed you, that he keeps forgiving you, that he has a home prepared for you, that he loves you on a daily basis, that his grace abounds, and he gives new grace when we need it, and his mercies are new. When you think about all that, how can you be negative? Be good to us. Be good to us. Relish God's love. I put down a few things about God's love tonight. I just wanted to kind of share with you. God loves us in spite of the circumstances. I know a lot of times we face difficult situations in life and we're tempted to, to maybe question whether or not God knew what he was doing in that area of our life. He does. He does. And, and, and sometimes we go through a situation that God puts us in and we say, well, God, if you loved me, you wouldn't do this. <laughs> yes, he does. And yes, he will. And, and many times those difficult situations, because he loves us so much, he's trying to teach us in that situation. Uh, relish the love of God in spite of our circumstances. You know, when you think of the word love today, you think about our world, and you think about the, uh, the, the, the thought, if you will, or the definition uh, of what love is to our world. It's totally different than what love is to God. And it's totally different than what love is for the Christian. When you think about the love of God, in spite of circumstances, how many times have we seen somebody say, well, I used to love them. You know, I fell out of love. Well, let me just, let me just, let me, this is, let me give you a sidebar here. This is a part of the message. Okay, but I just, I just feel like the same. Okay. This is another freak. You're getting two freakies in one day. You're already thankful, all right? You don't fall into love in the first place, so you can't fall out of love. Okay, because love, love is an action. Okay? Love is a decision. Love takes work, okay? Uh, so, so, but, but, but this is the world's philosophy. Well, the circumstances have changed. We no longer love each other. No, the reality is the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Uh, relish God's love. See, it doesn't matter what we're going through. It does, it does not matter how poorly I treat him. He still loves me. How many times have we... Don't, 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 don't name it out loud. You can name the person sitting by you. How many times have you sinned? Ask God, oh God, I'm sorry, forgive me, and then turn around and do it again. Same thing. 
And sometimes it's over and over and over and over again. And here's the thing about God. In spite of those circumstances, he still loves us. And we sometimes turn our back and say, well, I'm going to go my way because I'm much smarter than God is. I know what I need. God doesn't. And we get ourselves into a jungle mess. Who still loves us? God does. And when our friends don't because of circumstances, and when our families even maybe say, I'm disowning you because of this, God still loves us. Think about that. How can you be negative when you know that no matter what happens in life, God loves you? He loves us uh, in spite of the circumstances. Never let it be there. God's love is shown even in creation. Have you ever stopped and just thought about the world in which we live? The beauty of it? Uh, just the beauty of nature? That's God's creation. He spoke all that into existence. You know what he was doing? Showing us, I love you. Now, every day I wake up, and of course, I'm new to Arizona, so, well, I'm a, I'm, I'm a year now, so I guess I'm, am I a veteran yet? How many years do I have to give it? Three. Three? At least three? Okay, sorry. Who said that? <laughs> Somebody put a title to the bottom before you can say I'm a veteran of Arizona. But I'm, I'm, I'm a newbie, okay? You know what you know, you know, every time I get out of, out of my house in the morning and I walk outside, you know what I do every day? Besides that, <laughs> that was not God's creation, by the way. God did not create snakes. <laughs> you know what I do every day? Besides look for snakes? I, 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 I promise you this, and sometimes people look at me, I know some of my kids look at me sometimes, like, what's this doing? Looking at Adam Lincoln. We're going to the car. Now, I'm not even looking at all things. No, I, look, I look at the mountain ranges around me. And just about everywhere I go on this property, I can turn, I see the mountains. And I see the sun peeking over them, and then the other side of the, the day, I see the sun uh, uh, bowing down behind them. And you know what I do every day? I just thank God for the beauty of creation. You know what that's saying to us? I love you. I love you. Look at what I've given you. Look what I provided for you. Uh, look at the beauty of you. Yeah, you ever see these people put these pictures? Jane, you do it a lot. Put those pictures on Facebook when the sun is just rising. They're not doctored photos. That's just God. In his beauty. And he was saying to us, I love you. I love you. That's the love of God shown in creation. I, I put down this thought about God's love. It's revealed in the Bible. You see this all over the pages of Scripture. Uh, there's, not a, there's not a Scripture verse that says God only loves you if. There's not a Scripture verse that says God will only love you till. There's not a Scripture verse that says God won't love you. Okay? Uh, for whosoever uh, he sent his son to die for. For God so loved the world. Uh, he loved, it's revealed to us in Scripture. And by the way, you, you see all the people in Scripture that failed God, and God still loved them? That ought to bring you great encouragement, friends. Because I failed a lot. And he still loved us. His love is revealed in the Bible. Next, his love is most clearly seen at the cross. If you've ever doubted that God loves you, just take your mind back about 2,000 years ago. And remember what happened at a place called Calvary. A hill called Golgotha. Remember the cross that stood outstretched with Jesus Christ hanging upon it. Remember the broken and the beaten body. Remember the blood that he shed. I remember the, the cries from the cross, Father, forgive them. Uh, it is finished. If you ever doubt God's love, which makes you negative, stay positive and just think of it. Think about the time that you realize that cross was there for you. Uh, his love is shown through the cross the most clearly. Uh, last one, letter E. God's love is demonstrated through answered prayer. Several of you tonight have, uh, uh, just in testimony time, you mentioned the fact that you know, we've been praying about this and God did this. First of all, think about it. Do we even deserve to go into his presence? Do we deserve to ask him for our needs? No. But you know what's awesome about his love? He loves me enough to say, not only can you come to my presence and ask, I will answer your prayer. Do you realize that God answers every prayer we pray? You may not always understand the answer, and it may not be what you were expecting, but God does answer prayer. You know what that is? It's God saying to us, I love you. I love you enough to listen to care, to bear your burden, to, to, to bring those requests, and then to answer those to help you in your life and, and to make things work out for you. Relish God's love tonight. Well, if you want to stay positive, uh, one of the best things you can think about consistently in your life 
is the love of God. The love of God. Relish God's love. Number two. Number two. We then have to reprogram our thinking. We have to reprogram our thinking. In verse number eight, we see a list of things that Paul gives us to think about. True, just, lovely, honest, pure, uh, virtuous, your good report, praise, those types of things, okay? And we see that list laid out for us. You know, as I read that list, I can't help but think, if I turn on CNN, it doesn't match up with that list. Have you notice that? But just about any news channel I turn on, it usually doesn't match up with that list. Uh, you know, if you ever pick up a newspaper, it usually doesn't match up with that list. I listen to unsaved people and, and their talk, it usually doesn't match up with that list. Things that are pure and honest and true and just and lovely. We have to reprogram our thinking. You see, the Bible tells us to think on these things, but there's some action that has to be done on our part. We have to physically decide, I'm going to think on these things. And this is a hard process. This is not something you just flip a switch and all of a sudden I'm thinking positive. This is a work. Uh, this is something that you daily struggle with, you daily work at, until you get to the place where you've reprogrammed your thinking to, to start positive instead of starting negative having to switch it. Uh, reprogram our thinking. I put down a couple of thoughts here. I just want to kind of give you some things on this negativity. Uh, we are constantly bombarded with negative messages. Constantly. Again, go home tonight, turn on the news. First thing you're going to hear is going to be what? <laughs> Negativity, lies, criticism, whatever. Change the channel. What are you going to hear? Yeah. Same thing. More of the same. Pick up the news. Again, we're, we're just constantly bombarded with the negativity of the world. And it doesn't matter what arena we're talking about. Negativity is just out there. And daily it's hitting us and hitting us and hitting us and hitting us. Uh, this is letter B. I put this down. This is the downside of the age in which we live of instant communication and social media. You remember back in 1954? <laughs> some of you shouldn't remember that, okay? I know some of you do. You remember when we didn't have cell phones? <laughs> yeah. Amen. You remember when we didn't have Facebook? And Instagram and TikTok and the internet? And what else is there? Twitter? All those things. Remember when we didn't even have those? And we actually could go to somebody's house and sit on their front porch and talk to them? Yeah. Amen. In person? Yeah. Remember they lived far away? You used to hand write a letter to them? <laughs> and, and young people, this is amazing. This is amazing. Steve, you're going to appreciate this, all right? They, they make this thing, and you got a couple of young girls over here, you'll appreciate this as well. They make this thing, it's called an envelope. <laughs> And, and you write the note with the hand. You, you use this thing called a pen. <laughs> and you write this thing out, dear friend. And you write your message, and you fold it, and you put it in this thing called an envelope. And then you write their name on the front of it and where they live. And you and you get this thing that's called a stamp. You get it at this place, it's called the post office. Now I know that's, you know, what, what is it's an, it's an actual building, okay, to go to. And somebody's there at the register and they actually talk to you face to face. And you you buy a stamp and it's like 55 cents now. Okay, I don't have friends. It's not even going to go up this year, just so you know. We were <laughs> five little forever stamps now. Okay. And, and, and you, you used to have to lick those stamps to put them on. Now they're self stick. Could you imagine having COVID and lick? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody knew this was coming, so they made envelopes to have to self seal and the stamps that are self sealed, right? Somebody knew that. But. And, and you put a stamp up in the corner. And then, 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 then you got to listen, okay, this is cool, this is amazing. You walk down the end of your driveway, and you open up this little metal box, and they actually call it a mailbox. And you put that in there, and you flip up this thing on the side that's called a flag. It's red. And this little person shows up in a car. And, and they drive right to your mailbox, okay? This is cool. And they open it up, and they see there's something in there, and they take it. And then they put down your flag, and then in a few days, you know what happens? Your friend calls you on the phone and says, I went to my mailbox, and something that you wrote was in it. <laughs> it's an amazing concept. It's an amazing concept. How does it happen? It's a miracle. 
so many people were involved in making it happen that we didn't even realize. Did you realize that's how people used to communicate? And, we're, we're, and I know you don't remember, but in the day and age when the phone was first invented, and of course you had to be rich to even afford one, unless you really had to use the few you wanted to have the switchboard, the switchboard operator. You remember Mrs. Olson? Want to go? You keep listening to all your calls, right? It was such a simpler time, wasn't it? And, and relationships were deeper than they are now. And they were, I don't know if this is the word, realer. More real. There we go. More real, right? They meant something. And if you're going to communicate with somebody long distance, you really had to put some effort into it. And now we live in a day. I just told my mom, happy birthday. I love you. Right? And, and I go sit at my computer and I click this little icon that looks like a bird and I tweet something. And I, I click the big F to Facebook and I go and I type what I feel. What am I, I love when Facebook you open it up and it says, How are you how are you what are you feeling today? You really want to know Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> but you send that out and all of a sudden people start liking it from by the way, have you ever noticed on Facebook that you are friends with people that you haven't talked to in like 37 years? <laughs> have you noticed that? Have you ever noticed you get friend requests from people and you're like, who is that? Oh, I went to kindergarten with them? <laughs> right? But here's the down. I know it's good to communicate. I understand that. It's very helpful nowadays to be able to communicate in those ways. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this. There's also a lot of negativity on those things. And there's instant. If a riot happens in Tucson, we'll know about it in about 30 seconds. If, if, if a bully's beating somebody up in the alley behind the school, it's going to be on social media in about three minutes. And instead of helping the person, somebody's out there with their phone. Oh, this is cool. I can't wait to put on my Facebook. I might get viral on this bad boy. Right? And when, when a natural disaster takes place in, in a different country, we find out about it in about 15 minutes. And so we're constantly bombarded with it. Uh, and that's the downside of, of having instant communication, is, is we have instant negativity. Instant negativity. We're continually aware of all the problems in the world. Uh, there was a time in our, uh, when we were raising our children, there was a time where uh, we didn't let our children watch the news if we watched it. Because it was instant. Here's all the problems of the world. It's like, our kids don't need to hear that. They're, they're nine years old. Let's give them some positivity. Uh, all violent acts reported immediately. It's amazing. Uh, and we're constantly bombarded with it. And that's why we as Christians have to reprogram our thinking. I put down this thought just real quick here. Uh, the psychological dangers of constant negative input have to be thought about. Do you realize that constantly being bombarded with negativity affects your emotions and your mentality? The uh, group of psychologists did a study, and here's the results. I'm going I'm to read you this. I don't usually read, read a lot when I preach, but I want to read this to you. Some psychologists did a study. Here's what they said. Exposure to negative and violent media has serious and long-lasting psychological effects beyond simple feelings of pessimism and disapproval. They suggest that violent media exposure uh, can greatly increase or contribute to the development of stress anxiety, depression, and even PTSD. Think about that for just a minute. We wonder why our world is so stressed out. We wonder why the number one selling of medicine in America is for anxiety. We wonder why uh, uh, we're, we're, people are, are, are killing themselves because of depression. Well, well, what's happening? The bombardment of negativity has psychologically affected people. Negative news, they said, can significantly change an individual's mood. Especially there's a tendency in the news broadcast to emphasize suffering and also the emotional components of the story. In particular, negative news can affect your own personal worries. Viewing negative news means that you're likely to see your own personal worries as more threatening and severe than they actually are. And when you do, you start worrying about them. You're more likely to find your worry difficult to control and more distressing even than it normally would be. According to researchers, the way that negative news affects your mood can also have a larger effect 
on how you interpret and interact with the world around you. If it makes you more anxious or sad, for instance, then you may subconsciously become more attuned to negative or threatening events, and you may be more likely to see ambiguous or neutral events as negative ones. What happens? Negativity breeds negativity. And psychologically, when I'm bombarded by negativity, it affects me in mind. That's why Paul says, think on these things. Reprogram our thinking. Well, you know, it doesn't stop there. Let me give you this, and I'll give you the good, good aspect of the, of the point here. There's physical dangers of constant negative influence. Not only does negativity bombarding us affect our mind, the researchers went on to say this. Over time, when we experience this process again and again, our adrenal glands become fatigued. Adrenal fatigue can lead to being tired in the morning, a lack of restful sleep, anxiety and depression, as well as a multitude of other symptoms. Chronic levels of stress can have a myriad of physical manifestations such as headaches, muscle tension or pain, stomach problems, anxiety, and sleep issues. Can you imagine allowing the negativity of the world to affect the Christian so much that it physically makes us sick? That's possible. So how do we combat it? We reprogram our thinking. How do we do that? Well, that leads us to letter E. Letter E, we have to understand the importance of faith-building input into our life. We know the negative stuff's out there. We know we're constantly bombarded by it. Even if we shield ourselves from it, somebody's going to talk about it. You go to work, and you might have avoided all the news and the negativity, and somebody's going to come up to you and say, hey, did you hear about so what do we do? We reprogram our thinking by thinking on things that build and strengthen our faith. How do we do that? This is so simple, but it's so hard. This is so simple, but we miss it and neglect it. Let me give you three things here real quick that will help you to put faith-building input into your life in the midst of all the negativity that thus helps us reprogram our thinking. Number one, develop a devotional life. Daily spend time in the Bible and in prayer. Now, I say that, and that is so simple to say. But you would be shocked, amazed, and probably appalled if we took a poll every Sunday morning how many of you spent time in God's Word reading and praying this week, let alone every day this week. It would be a shock to many Christians to see how, how lax we are in this area, how we struggle with just daily reading our Bible and daily spending time with God in prayer. You want to have a faith-building input into your life to the combat the negativity, here's how you start it. Make sure every day you spend time with your Savior. That's going to remind you of his love, by the way. We talked about point number one. Spend time in his word. That's why he gave it to us. Uh, spend time in prayer. He tells you to come boldly to the throne of grace. Take him up on it. Test him. Try him. Prove him. He wants us to. Develop a daily life. Secondly, start every day thankful. Start every day thankful. I didn't used to do this when I was a young, strapping, strong, good-looking man. Now I'm just good-looking, nice, young, <laughs> strong, strapping on, and there you go. But uh, <laughs> you know what I do now when I wake up out of bed? When my feet hit the floor? Thank you, Lord, that I got out of bed today. I got another day to live. I, I was 20 years old. I didn't think about it. Stuff. I was invincible. I... I I'll take on a train, you know, move the train. Come on! I'm 20, man. I... Now I'm like, ugh. <laughs> right. you, ever, you ever wake out of bed and you crack so much you sound like it's Rice Krispies? And I crack on top? Huh? How many of you? Come on, let's see. Let's see some hands. All right. Let's see some testimonies tonight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a few more years. I know. I, pro I won't catch you though. Don't no worry. Amen. Start every day thankful. Do you realize that the first thing you do when you wake out of bed is just praise God and thank Him for His goodness and a new day and, and, and new new mercies that day and a new opportunity to live for Him and a new opportunity to make a difference and, and a new day to have a relationship with Him? You start every day thankful. Guess what happens to it immediately through your life? The negativity is easier to put away because you start in a positive fashion. Daily devotional life. I start each day thankful. And the third, I put down this. Expect God every day to work for you. Do you realize 
realize this, Christian? I mean, I, I know we do, but sometimes we forget about this. Do you realize that God's on your side? You ever stop and think about that? The battles that I face, God's on my side. The burdens that I carry, God's on my side. The problems that I have, God's on my side. The disagreements, whatever you feel like, God's on my side. He, he fights for me. He, he, I'm his child. He loves me. Because of his love, I can expect him daily to work on my back. And when I get up and the negativity starts, here's what I can say to the negativity. Hey, nanny, nanny, boo-boo. God's on my side. He's going to do something for me today. He's going to work on my behalf today. And even in the midst of this negative thing that you say I'm going through, this problem that I'm facing, this burden that I'm carrying, yes, it looks negative, but because I have an awesome God, he's going to see me through today. He's working on my behalf. You talk about reprogramming your thinking. You do those three things every day. You, you do that for a week. Just do it for a week. And see the change that takes place in your life. And see when the, when the, the guy you work with looks at you and says, what's wrong with you? You've changed. What, what, what are you smoking? What drug are you on? No, I'm just positive. I'm just positive. I've reprogrammed my thinking. Number one, relish God's love. Number two, reprogram your thinking. Number three. Uh, number three. Here. There we go. Number three, recognize the best in others. Recognize the best in others. Again, verse number eight gives us those things to think about true and just and lovely and pure and honest. Recognize the best in others. You know what I've learned? Yeah, I'm still working on this. Okay? But I've learned I've learned this mostly. It's real easy to point out your fault. It's real easy to look at anybody in this room and say, well, you know, they're a pretty good person, but here's where they struggle. It's real easy. Especially when I want to make myself look good. Amen. Come on. Especially when I want to make sure that I, I'm, I'm a little better than that because here's what they... It's easy to find fault in people, isn't it? Very easy. You know what can be tough sometimes? To make sure I reprogram my thinking to find the best in someone. Now, I will admit this. Some people you have to dig a little deeper than others. I know that. But uh, we need to realize a couple of things. First of all, I keep getting the wrong button. I'm sorry. Uh, realize a couple things. First of all, realize that this. All people are imperfect. There's not a perfect person on planet Earth. And the one that did walk planet Earth, they crucified him. Nobody's perfect. There's no perfect people. There's no perfect pastors. Amen. There's close to perfect pastors. <laughs> No perfect pastor, no perfect parishioner, no perfect person, no perfect church, no perfect government, no perfect society. We are flesh. And we fail each other. There's no perfection. So if I waste my time looking for a perfect person, that's exactly what I'm going to do is waste my time. Realize that all people are imperfect. Secondly, uh, people do have many positive things about them if I'm willing to really look. If I'm willing to really give that person the benefit of that, if I'm really to, to really uh, invest in their life and get to know them and make a deep relationship and connection with them, I'll find positive things. I may not see it on the surface, but maybe that person is true or honest or just, and I just didn't see it to begin with. Uh, you know, maybe they're well reported of by their friend. Uh, maybe they do praiseworthy things. Whatever the case may be, you go down that list, verse number eight. They have some of those qualities. That's what I have to focus. Because it's too easy in our world to focus on what's wrong with people instead of what's right with people. Paul said in Philippians chapter 1, verse number 3, I thank God upon every remembrance of you. Every remembrance of you. You know, you know somebody in your life today that most of the time when you think about them is positive, but every now and then you remember that negative thing they did. And, 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 of course, we know people that live, live by this model. I'll forgive you, but I won't forget. And so when you think about that person, what comes to your mind? The thing that you're not willing to forget. But I forget. By the way, you can't, you can't forgive and still hold on. That's a whole other message for another night, okay? <laughs> forgiveness is not, uh, I'll, I'll, you say I'm sorry, I'll say okay, but I'm going to remember. That's not forgiveness, okay? But, but we, we, we have that about people. Because we know negative things about people. Because we're all negative people. We're, we're human. We're flesh. We know those things. How in the world could Paul say, every remembrance I have about you, I thank God. 
I think the answer is pretty simple. He chose to focus on the positive things. He chose to focus. See, see here, here's the thing about even forgiveness. This is what I'm, since we talked about it, since you just brought it up again, okay? Here's the thing about forgiveness. It doesn't mean I forget, because humanly I can't. What it means is I don't bring it up again. Amen. I don't focus on it. I don't make it the center of my thought process about you. I forgive and I let it go. Uh, I forgive and I say, I'm not going to throw it back in their face. Paul, Paul here says, I thank God upon every remembrance of you. Because here's what he's doing. He's thinking about the true things about that friend in, in Philippi. He's thinking about the just things about the church there at Philippi, the Christians that he had met and that he had invested in their life. Were there negative things? I'm sure there were. But Paul said, I choose to focus on the problem. I choose to thank God upon the positive things about it. Let me give this last thing, number four. Uh, relish God's love, reprogram our thinking, recognize the best in others. Number four. Number four. We must reach out to lost and hurting people. We must reach out to lost and hurting people. Verse number nine, he says, he reminds us to do the things that we've seen him do. Remember what Paul has taught us and live like Paul lived. Well, let me give you a couple thoughts here, okay? Here, here's, here, here's the thing. I'll give you a couple thoughts here. When I reach out to hurting people, number one, that's a positive thing, right? But number two, when I see the needs of hurting people and they affect me enough to reach out to them, you know what happens to my negative things in my life? They don't seem so bad. I, I know I've said this before, but, but uh, the, the, the state, you know, I used to complain because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. Right? And when I work at reaching out to lost people, realizing I have a Savior, they don't. I have a home in heaven, they don't. I have a God who loves me, they're still searching for that love. It, it makes the problems in my life not, 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 not so, seem so insurmountable, not seem so huge. And when I help hurting people, I realize they have needs that are way bigger than mine. Mine kind of dissipate a little bit. They don't go away. I don't focus on them when I reach out for people. Uh, let me give you a couple thoughts here. First of all, uh, look on the field, not the fault. But when I focus on faults, I don't want to help you. you got issues, man. Right? But then when I look on the fields that, by the way, Christ says are white already on the harvest, it changes my thinking. Reach out to the lost and the hurting. Look on the fields, not the faults. Uh, letter B, uh, Paul's plea to the Philippians was to do as he was doing. That's what he said in verse number 9. Remember what I taught you. Remember how I live. Remember my example and go out and do it. Was Paul perfect? No. Paul had issues. Was Paul's lifestyle here when he's writing the first book of Philippians a lifestyle worth uh, uh, copying or using an example of having? Yes. Yes. And he reminds us, do what I, what was Paul doing that he said, this is what you need to be doing? I, I, I just put out, I, it's not an outline or anything, but just kind of in my notes, I kind of thought of a couple things. You realize that Paul was always reaching to the lost? That was his goal. That was his mission. Uh, Paul wasn't about money. Paul wasn't about fame. Paul definitely wasn't about popularity. A lot of people hated Paul. What was he about? Bringing lost people to Jesus Christ. And so he tells the church of Philippi, you remember my example? You do that. I don't keep you positive. Well, there's not much better in life than bringing somebody to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Taking them through scripture and saying, hey, here's what Jesus says, and watching them call upon Jesus. Too. There's not much of a greater joy in life than that. It's an awesome experience. And Paul says, do as I do. He was always reaching the lost. Paul loved souls and he longed for their salvation. Everywhere you read about Paul, you don't find Paul complaining. You don't find Paul griping. You find Paul investing in people. Reaching the lost at any cost. I put this down lastly. Bringing people to Christ brings positive joy. You know, the Bible says there's rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repented. Before the angels can rejoice, you know what we should do? Rejoice first. <laughs> It's exciting when somebody trusts Christ. It's exciting when somebody realizes they're lost, but Jesus died to save them, and they can trust Him and have a home in Him. That's exciting to see. It brings some positivity, uh, some positivity, some positivity in the middle of a negative world. Psalm one twenty six six says, "He that goeth forth weeping shall come again with what rejoicing, rejoicing." See, joy. What is, what is this? Uh, what is it? It's, I can't even remember the verse now, but I'm a great preacher. Uh, so, sorrow endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Something along those lines. 
hope some of them maybe you actually read the Bible and you know what that verse says. But you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> we struggle at times, but man, if we put Christ first, we focus on Him, joy comes. Joy comes. It might not be immediate. It may not be when I want it, but it comes. You see, faith in Christ enables us to be positive in a negative world. Government's not going to help you with that. Society's not going to help you with that. Sometimes the church doesn't even help us with that, although it should be helping, right? A relationship with Christ is what helps us be positive in the negative world. Uh, we've been talking to the teens for weeks now, and I'll just give you this thought. Our identity is not found in the world. Our identity is not in what other people think. Our identity, because we're a child of God, is in Jesus Christ. We are His and He is ours. Faith in Christ helps us to be positive. A positive testimony positive outlook, a positive word, a positive lifestyle affects other people to the point where we can bring them to Jesus Christ. Uh, what does scripture say? Uh, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Positivity in the negative world. Can it be done? Yes. Is it easy? Is there a foolproof method? Well, I gave you some thoughts tonight that will help, but still you've got to put the determination and the effort into it. Uh, some some self-help book is not going to help you. Uh, positive motivational speaker is not going to help you. Okay, What's going to help you is this right here. This right here. And if we'll put some of these thoughts into practice in our lives, we can look at all the negative stuff in the world and say, I'm still happy. I'm still positive. Jesus is still my Savior. God is still sovereign. The blood still saves. The Bible still sure, right? We can go through everything we said this morning. Why? Stay positive in the negative world. Christians, let me tell you something. We need more Christians that are on top fire. And if you're going through a problem in your life and you're like, I don't feel like being positive, fake it till you make it. Put a smile on your face and press on anyways. Uh, talk to somebody and get some encouragement if you need. That's fine. But don't let the world know. Because <laughs> then when we say, our God's so good. Oh, yeah, well, last week you were. <laughs> right? Be positive in the midst of the negative It'll change your life. And it might just change your life around. Now let's be positive in all the negative. Father, Lord, tonight I pray you'll take uh, the thoughts that have been shared here from Philippians, Lord, and the encouragement given to us by the Apostle Paul. Lord, may we claim these truths and use these truths in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, we know that negativity is very easy to find in our world. We know that it's found. But we know daily we're bombarded with it. Help us, Lord, to press on and be positive. Help us to put you first. Help us to focus our attention and our thoughts and our heart on Jesus Christ. May we be thankful for the love that you have for us. And we reprogram our thinking, Lord. And we think on these things mentioned by Paul, these good things. Uh, Lord, may we make that effort and that determination uh, to live a positive life, I pray. And we know that you'll bless us for it. We know that the results will be great in our lives as well as in the lives of many other people that we have an influence over. Uh, Lord, just help us to stay positive in the midst of a negative world, I pray. Father, we ask you now tonight to be dismissed, just to go safely into our home. Uh, Lord, we ask you to bring us back again on Wednesday as we meet together. Lord, we just ask you to work in our hearts and our lives this week. Uh, Lord, give us the opportunity this week to, to uh, share the gospel with somebody that crossed our path. Help us to maybe have the opportunity to be positive to somebody who, who is dealing with a negative situation and show them the love of Christ as well. Uh, Lord, live, help us to live for you this week, we pray. Let's the work day and school day tomorrow. May everything that we do, Lord, may it honor and please you. We pray. We love you. We thank you for what you've done in our lives and what you'll continue to do. We ask you things in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us tonight. And we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Good standing right here. Yeah, I don't know what it is.